Recorded live at Mesa East Bowl in Far East Mesa. Go figure, we're here for the title matches of today's JBT event. Just had our handicap winner, Jake King, won title number two. Jason Gutzeit's trying to win U17 title number two. And he's going up against the buzzsaw in Caitlin Abagani, who's already won girls scratch today. That's right, I called you a buzzsaw. I know, you love it. Thank you very much. She's already won U17 with the win over Kendall Belay about four hours ago, and now it's finally time for her to play her U17 match. To the right, talking about another buzzsaw, Abagania. Josh Abagania has won seven career titles, just one last week up in Utah, trying to win down here in the Phoenix area, get to win number eight of his excellent JBT career, but he's got a tough customer here in Aaron Coleman, who we last saw on camera in, I believe, uh, 1997, is that about right? Something like that. Yes. Three-time handicap champ, but yet to break through for his first career scratch win. He'd love to do it right here. See that absolutely picture-perfect form of Caitlin? Smashes that rack for two in a row in an early lead. Josh, we talk about it all the time. One of the more simple games in the scratch division. Not the big, powerful hook. Not covered a million boards, but just hitting his mark, exact mark, over and over and over and over. Just bludgeons you to death with accuracy. And he's clutch, too. He was clutch when he needed it in Utah last week. He was clutch in the semifinal game over there to win that match. Aaron's grown up to be a big kid with a whole lot of power. So I have a plaque for him. Uh, as soon as this game is over, we do everybody who's left. You don't have to be in the picture, but we'd love to have him. If you got other plans on Easter, I understand, too. Stick around? See you in a few minutes. He was great. Caitlin more than capable of converting this 6 7 10. That's fairly close. A little too much of that 6. Aaron said, bigger guy, a lot of raw power. Always had power. Now it's power under control. And he's open spare, double spare to get a 10 pin lead over there. Gutsai, one of a whole crop of up and coming scratch bowlers around the 13 to 16 age range. Definitely been growing into his game as he starts to grow up, and he's a threat to he's a threat to win scratch titles. Just finished in the top four over there, losing to Aaron. There was Coleman's everywhere. I got to remind myself which Coleman's which. Aaron and Cameron both made the top four unrelated. Hold on a short 36 foot pattern, three to one ratio. That's actually a fairly high ratio for short, which led to the scores being decent. Not the mega low scores we saw in Utah last week on a similar pattern. Just a little more slope and a uh, fresher surface for the most part. Remember that Jason with the high rim rates. Wow. Oh, jeez. Here's a little, here's a little uh-uh-uh to that solid 7-9. Is he going to go all Caitlin Clark on it? Is he going to do a, you can't see me in a second here? What? Oh my goodness. That was just a U17 title match. And I know that was just Jason against the pins, but Caitlin ain't going to like that. We'll see how she reacts to this. By tripping a four of her own. She might go, who was the other girl? Uh, Oh, 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 Reese on the other team. But fire. Anybody know what I'm talking about the, with the women's basketball? No, no, nothing? Nothing? All right. I'll just talk to myself here in this camera for a little while. Keep on going. Angel Reese, that's who I was trying to think of. Look at that follow through. Best way to answer is with the double of your own. She does. Game on in U17. Sometimes these U17 and even the girls games get goofy as they're sort of like after school. This one has uh, some intensity going to it. Beg your pardon? Way after school for you, <laughs> yes. Do you have school tomorrow? Yeah. Roll it, jump! That pin's still rolling around. Oh, it didn't catch it. Or it didn't knock it over is what I meant to say. We would have had to respot that if it had fallen because it touched the machinery. That's a little left. Wow. Surprised that ball held. He's thrown a pretty big ball. 
which means you got to get it to the right to that break point. That ball actually held longer than I thought it would. It leaves a half ten. The ball didn't even face up enough. Spared up, he'll have a 15 pin lead through seven frames. Jason's paid his dues coming through the handicap division. Struggled in his initial scratch here last year. He's grown up a little bit, making more cuts than he misses now, and now he's got some finals out of the way as well. No problem at all at that 10 pin. Does have that 15 pin lead. Aaron from a JBT family. Coleman's have won JBT titles on the East and West Coast. Between Aaron, his dad, and his uncle, they've literally been doing JBT almost as long as I have. And believe me, that's saying something. Let's see if we can get the break one a little further right on this shot. That's bet, well, oh, he's found a little something there. He doesn't have to get that ball as far right as I thought. Flat 10 and then scatters the light hit. Looking good. Caitlin with a lower rev rate than Jason. We'll be having a lay down point further to the right, but still roughly a similar break point. She's rocking that Team USA shirt. And she so well has earned. See, right around the same break. Yeah, just dead flush in a row. Different ways to go about the same impressive result for both bowlers. Coleman converts the 6-10 and as a result, maintains a one pin deficit to Abagani, who will be spare working in his seventh. Good stuff to wrap up Easter Sunday here in Mesa. Literally, yep. See that follow through go a little bit left of, of dead parallel, so the ball lays down left and will want to check early. Oso wanted it to carry, then just said, please don't leave me, leave a 4 9. All in all, solid force will take it as Big Brother sucks that four pin off the deck to catch the strike for his own. Hard and straight with plastic, that's the way to do it out of both bowlers. No problem there. Four pin game. Tour rolls on to Lubbock, Texas next week. I don't know who booked that. Talk to the scheduler for that one. Uh, can't wait to see Bell and Monica Wood and the team out there in Texas next week. Wow. Yeah, he's definitely found something there. That's a spot on the lane I would not think matched up with rev rate and ball, but it is obviously working for him. That works for Josh as he catches the double, increases his lead to 11. Followed by Albuquerque in two weeks, and then SoCal, Long Beach, California in three weeks. All great hosts as we head down the stretch run of the tour of season 27. Aaron plus twister pins plus light hit equals frenetic pin action. Wow. Taps the 10 pin out there. The best Caitlin can do is 221. And I think that puts Jason up, right? He's got to win three of these to get into the U17 TPC at the end of the season. He has one on 76. Yeah, he needs to hold six pins account. Wow. As I just said, Aaron plus twister pin plus light hit equals shrapnel down the lanes. That holds the five. All he does is strike out from the eighth. He's in the 230s and he's going to win U17. Jay wins U17. Caitlin wins girls. Jake wins handicap and scratch to be determined. We could have a great finish over there. Now both bowlers on doubles. Josh leads by 11. Consolidate. Yeah, that little extra miss room left just looked better and better and better as the game went on. Found it, recognized it, made excellent shots, wins the match. 
Now I can get it. Oh, sure. Okay. Caitlin's showing off her many pockets right now. Big Brother needs one right in the 1-3. Oh, and instead throws one right in the 3-6. Oh, no. Bad time for a washout there. Whoops. Boy, high level game out of both bowlers there for U17. It'll be 237 to 220 something. For a washout for Josh, I'd say this is about 60 40 that he makes it. If he does make it, he will trail by three. Instead, boy, worst possible result. 6 1 on a double. Hey, well, fine. 219. Prove me wrong. Nice hand from still a lot of people sticking around. Do you people have hands to eat or something? What's going on behind me? Here we go. They're all still trying for the hoverboard. Nice. You bet. Oh wait, Caitlin, bring the whole jug of eggs. Yikes. A very uncharacteristic ninth and tenth frame. A 6-1 on the double, followed by a Brooklyn 5-10. Now let's do some math and see if this is already over. 197 if he spares it. Coleman marks for... 214, Coleman opens for 203. Josh must spare this just to force Aaron to get count in the 10th. Boy, has that changed. I'm not even gonna get an egg, poor Josh. Must spare it to have a chance, and it's close. No. Boy, as clutch as he has been lately, the wheels came off in frames nine and 10 there. As Aaron Coleman is going to become a scratch JBT champion here in April of 23. Wait, 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 wait. That's your egg. There's still a hoverboard out there. Caitlin drew her egg and got beans. Jay will open that up and get beans. That's how it's been going for the last seven hours. <laughs> and Aaron's got a victory lap. There's a scratch champion. Plus one for the Coleman family connect collection. Oh, you heard that emphatic yes from both of our champions today. That had a great look on the uh, quote unquote traditional way to play these short patterns. And he's the one that comes up with the hits in the end for a 2.30 and a win. And an egg. Two thirty-five is the final. He is a happy scratch champ. Get your handshake from two nice kids, Aaron. Get your high tens over here. Now come and win a hoverboard. A hoverboard. Somewhere in there is still a two hundred and fifty dollar hoverboard. Here we go. Here we go. Jelly beans. That's it. Beans. Crying out loud. I feel like every whole egg has beans stickers. 